Our patient is a 56-year-old male who um, used to be a heavy drinker but quit since 2016. Um, he's a case of a pancreatic uh, ductal stone presented with back pain in 2017 with a diffuse calcification along the pancreas seen on x-ray. An MRI of the abdomen with contrast with MRCP was done, which showed a PD dilated to 0.9 centimeters and a 1.2 centimeter stone at the pancreatic duct at neck and body region, and a 0.3 millimeter stone at distal to, to a larger stone in the body region, and there was diffuse pancreatic atrophy. A ERCP was performed with spy glass pancreatoscopy and later tri tripsy in uh, last year, uh, December. And it showed a stricture at distal PD with multiple PD stones. The stricture was then dilated to six millimeters with a laser lithotripsy done with partial fragmentation of the PD stones. Um, the same procedure was then repeated um, earlier this year in June and it still showed a stricture at distal PD with hard PD stone at the body region. Laser lithotripsy was then performed again with partial fragmentation of the PD stones and a plastic stent was then inserted. So this is the MRCP view and the ERCP view. And so today we will be performing the ERCP with spy glass, laser lithotripsy for the pancreatic ductal stone, and then the dilation of the PD stricture, plus or minus putting in a multiple um, plastic stents. So we start this case. Uh, so basically we have a patient with chronic pancreatitis with uh, calicula in the pancreatic duct and also pos possible stricture. Uh, the aim of this treatment is to first define the anatomy in the pancreatic duct and then plan to see what therapy can be given. So uh, we have a lot of people in the room, Eric and Lewis, Dr. Chan supervising me, <laughs> Fawn and <laughs> Millie who are going to help us and Etonia has given the anesthesia. So a lot of people to help with this case. So hopefully we should succeed then. We will. Yeah. Okay. We are. So everybody is optimistic. So uh, what I'm doing now is I'm going in with a side wing, Olympus standard side wing scope. Uh, I'm trying to define the anatomy in the stomach here. I'm aspirating out all the fluid because this patient is not having an endotracheal tube. So it's very important to see that the stomach is completely empty. Now, in sometimes when the patient is very thin and lying totally prone on the stomach, separating the antral can sometimes be difficult. So the scope tends to actually loop. So I'm pulling back, turning slightly to the right to see if I can Fine. Now you can see now it's retroverted there. So come back and this time I'm just going to go down towards the pylorus and this stomach is cascading a little. So I have to go to the left now so that I don't loop too much in the stomach uh, and then go towards the pylorus. Now repeatedly if this movement is failing, I'll then turn the patient to the left lateral position. So we are now near the pyloric area, but you can see it's a very floppy stomach that he's got. So that's the reason why this amount of difficulty to get in there. But anyway, we are now through and uh, this is in the duodenal cap, which is fairly large. I got in the second part of the duodenum. I'll push the scope in. I'm seeing some stents there. Remove the scope. We, uh, pull back a little, but you can see a lot of deformity. In fact, I can't get a long loop in this area, so I am going to push it a little more, go deeper into the second part of the duodenum, then turn my scope small knob to the right and pull back. And as I do it, I want to watch the fluoroscopy to see if the scope is going to not fall back. Can I just have it down there? Yeah. So you see I am in the long position now, I am going to turn my scope to the right to the right and then as a full back I want to see that the scope does, ah, is falling back. So this is an indication that there is considerable fibrosis in that area of the pancreatic head region and that is why you can't get your scope fixed onto this area but it is important to get a good position if you want to use a pancreatic scope. So again going down. Uh, so the short loop position is becoming difficult. Eh? Again, it's back. So we'll uh, try and do it in the semi-long position in this case. So because the first thing I have to pull out this uh, pancreatic stand. So do we have a uh, rat tooth forceps or alligator forceps? Yeah. 
The other thing is if the axillary papilla is accessible, sometimes it may be easier to do it through that route. Maybe I can. Very nice. So I'm, I've shortened it a little bit, but I think we still require to shorten it a little more. And then you can see the stones in the head region here. Sipo, can you get? Are you getting the fluoroscopy picture? Uh, are we connected it. to the auditorium? Hello. Yes, sir. We can hear. You. But we can't hear them. We can't hear them. They can hear us? Sipo, can you hear us? Yes. Uh, who, who's in the moderation? <laughs> yes. It's Noria here, mm -hmm. Honshi here, and Supo is here. Okay. So it was very silent, so I thought whether everybody has gone for lunch or... We are watching. Yeah. Really watching carefully. <laughs> okay. I'll join in. Uh, I'll join in okay, and add to the chatter. <laughs> yeah, so you see, Uzma, what we found was that this was a very floppy stomach. And uh, we get to the duodenum, and then when we get into the second part of the duodenum, we are not able to shorten the scope. It's becoming extremely difficult to shorten the scope uh, because of the fibrosis, I think, around this area. So you would do it in the semi-long position then? Yeah, I think case? we have to do, but the problem is passing a pancreatic scope is not going I to be easy. I was just going to say that. That's going to yeah. be the hard thing. The hard thing, yeah. Is trying to do that in the long position. It's not so easy to do it in the long position. Uh, so we'll have to do some work from here, I think. In your institution for PD stones, uh, Nagi, your preferred. Uh, uh, we uh, we always prefer extracorporeal shock pearl with a tripsy. We uh, you usually put a PD stent and then. Yeah, then we then we'll, then we'll actually uh, in our institution if this patient we would do first an extracorporeal shock pearl with a tripsy, put a PD stent and then after that clear all the fragments and put a PD stent, get back the patient after three months, and you'll see that everything would have cleared by that time. So this is the easiest technique to do. Uh, alternative is to use a spyglass with laser, but I'm uh, I'm not a big fan of that. Most of the time, so if the duct is strictured in the head, it's hard to to get the spyglass in. Yeah, that's another problem. There's not enough space very often. So I have uh, Patrick. Can you close? Yeah. So now we'll try and get this is seven French stent. So hopefully we should get it out of this. Yeah. You can already now see some fragments coming out. You can out. see some fragments and some proteinaceous material coming out. So, now there are two ways of doing this. I am going to cannulate with a standard cannula, use a guide wire, and then I am going to pass my spy scope on the guide wire to see what is inside. Uh, if you want to use an EHL or a ESW, I mean a laser, it is better to preload it onto the guy, onto your spy scope. But then the problem is you won't have the guidance of the of the wire to get your scope in. So when you're in in the PD, do you still use your O25 guide wire? Or do yeah, you use always a O25. One? I've stopped using O35 now. It's always O25. Some so now we're trying to see the orifice is not very clear, so it's a little blind. But uh, with the experience that we have with Patrick here, I'm hoping that we'll get in. Nagi, I think you did this case last year, so <laughs> it will be easy for you this time again. <laughs> Uh, same, same patient. <laughs> you got to clear it this time. Finish it. Nice. <laughs> I think it's going to be the same story. Maybe he'll come back next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you... Yeah, fluoro. We're trying to see the wire is going in. So now you save this case for you. Remember you yeah. request from the RTTF workshop. <laughs> this is the same gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> So I've got two more opportunities next year to again do him. <laughs> Ready, DF. Keep the uh, uh, short wave lipo tips tripsy away so that you can come back to do spyglass <laughs> every time. Yeah, you gone in.
resistance, yeah. There is a fragment there which is actually blocking it. What is the experience with shock wave in uh, Prince of Wales? I know, do you do? We don't really do it that often. So, yeah, that's why we, we ask you back every year. <laughs> it seems to be in the bile duct now. Let's just see that. Yeah, I think it's in the bile duct. Yeah, it's in the CBD. So, we'll come back now uh, and then redirect it towards 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock position. This, this case Getting illustrates the, the difficulty in managing these severe yeah. calcific chronic pancreatitis patients. Yeah. Uh, it's never just one procedure and done. Yeah. So now can you see, I'm just changing the direction a little so that Patrick can now see if you can go, uh, no, still in the bile duct, yeah, still in the bile duct. So I come back a little and then turn my spindletome more towards one o'clock position and put it more horizontal and hopefully it will go into the, yeah, that's, that's the pancreatic. Yeah, that's pancreatic duct, but there's some obstruction. Ah, good. I think now you are in the pancreas. See that now it's in the pancreatic duct. And now I'm going to, yeah. So this is very important. You should not push further. What I'm going to do is I'll ask uh, Patrick to inject some contrast to see where the pathway. I don't want to go into a side branch here. Yeah. Okay, inject small amount uh, and see how it goes. See that how it's going now, it's going down and then going around. So you'll have to go that way. It's quite dilated. It's quite dilated. Uh, the other option, of course, is surgery. Well, the, I was going to bring that up if you've been trying yeah, to so clear his stones for the last three years. Yeah, I think yeah, uh, there was some question of whether he didn't want it or something. I think they tried. Trying to get him to get it done. Oh, now we are gone through. Excellent, excellent. So I think um, now we are through. We, and it's very important. Again, this is very important for the audience to see on the fluoroscopy. You have an angle guide where we selected an angled BC glide, 025. And the reason why angle is very important in the pancreatic duct is if you put it straight, it can go through the side branches and you can have problem. With an angle, that doesn't happen. Uh, so that's why you always use an angled wire. Now what I'm going to do is I'm asking Patrick to inject some more to delineate the anatomy and so that I know that I'm going in the right path, you know. Keep injecting, keep injecting, keep injecting. Yeah, see that how the duct is now going down and we follow the duct with the guide wire. Okay. 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 So now I think you should place the wire, keep the wire in place like that. So and then I'll start uh, pulling back on the spintertome, the wire in place. So I'm not using much fluoroscopy at this point of time. And there's, you already did a, a PD spintrotomy? Yes, PD spintrotomy is done. So I'm just wondering, Uzma, whether we should do a small balloon. No, I don't think it's necessary also because quite the opening seems to be okay. The problem is going to be a stricture in the head region which we have to negotiate with the, with the pancreatic scope. The other problem is going to be that even if you do negotiate, um, still left with the stricture. The, the getting a EA laser probe into the baby scope is not going to be so easy. So let's so let's try that now. So we we'll put a glass scope now. Yeah. Uh, okay. So we'll we'll change to a pancreatic scope. We're using the spy scope, the standard cholangioscope, which can be also used for the pancreatic duct if it's dilated. So we're going to use the same scope, and I think you already seen this in earlier um, demonstration. Yeah. Okay. Na Nagi, before you uh, put the uh, scope, uh, yeah. the spy, uh, do you have to dilate or uh, bulge the uh, stenosis? No, this has been already spintrotomy has already been done, so I'm not using dilating, but I'm not sure about the internal anatomy. So what I'll do is after putting the spy scope, I'll see. If the inter internal anatomy, there is a stricture there, then we have to come back and then dilate the stricture before going in. I have a feeling that this may be a little difficult in the head region, but once you get just past the head, then if you visualize the big stone, then we can do the laser. Yes, yes, we can. So, you have the, we have the scope right up to the stone there. So, I am just going to withdraw it a little to show you the stones before we feed in the can you see the stones there? 
So can we have the uh, spy view? Oh, you're not getting the spy view? Yep. Yeah, we're seeing it now. Yeah, you can see those whitish, these are the white stones that you're seeing now. So I'm going to come back a little. Can you see it now? Nicely? Yes. Okay? Clearly. Yes. Nicely, yeah. you can see right in the... the yeah, right in the center, there. you can see the yeah. stone there. So the now what we're going to do is we'll have to feed a laser fiber inside to get this stone to get to blast it. So as we do that, you can go back and then come back to us as we try to put this laser fiber through. Ideally, if you can't get this laser fiber through now because we take out the guide wire and then uh, do this. If you can't do, then uh, we have to take out the whole thing, we feed the laser fiber and then go in. So we'll try it this way now. Okay. So Patrick is very experienced here. So if it, yeah, we pull out the guide wire and then we're going to put the laser fiber. So what happens is that the uh, elevator level, the laser fiber can sometimes be difficult to get through because of uh, this acute kink that you get with the elevator. But you see, in this case, the angle is so straight. bad, you can't do anything. Well, you know, it's uh, super angle. It's, it, it's okay now, Your but still. <laughs> Hopefully. If you don't, it's Patrick's fault. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think the one benefit with the new spy system, uh, it's a little bit easier to pass your accessories through. Yeah, it's I've one noticed. point. They say 1.2. Yeah. This is 1.3, I think. No, oh. the the view with the the second generation digital spy is fantastic. Yeah. Compared to much last better, year, now we're yeah. getting a much better view. And the catheter itself yeah. is much more flexible. Now the resistance. But gone. Which the the Hopefully. actual spy scope itself is 10 French. Uh, resistance now. Yeah. So what I'll so do is I'll just pull it back. So now there's resistance when you pass this. So I'm going to do is to pull back uh, the spy and pull it back a little, and then. But it's always a fine line between pulling yeah. back and falling out. Falling so. out, yeah. <laughs> so Uzma is warning us now. <laughs> so we take your warning be now. Be no? careful. Now. Well, I do agree. Sometimes it's easier to preload it. Yeah. Now, now I'm pushing it in. Yeah, no? Still resistance? Better? Better? Yeah. Okay, so let's see if you are going to yeah, coming out. Through. We oh. can actually watch the laser fiber coming out through the through the scope. Yeah, so I'm just having the bridge yeah. down there. Now you're still resistance? Now? Now I'm, I'm moving the stone with my scope. He's there. trying to just straighten out his scope a little bit. Okay? No? Okay, so I'll actually we can see in the scope itself. Okay, now I'm just going to pull back if we can push a little. Patrick, do that, do that. No, no, you're going in? No, okay, so maybe the scope angle then. So, what I'll do is I'll straighten the scope a little, but the problem is we may fall back, and Uzma has already predicted that. <laughs> is it? It's no? tough. Okay, so I come back a little and the then, yeah, we'll, we'll see. It's not it. that tight in the head though. It seems like you got the spy scope up pretty easily. Yeah, because you're up there. <laughs> okay, so I come back and I'm going to see if I can, yeah, oh get out, yeah. It. Oh God, you got nice. it, yeah. So nice now. So I come back a little more till we hit the stone. So you have to come with this, yeah, this is all the stone. Although you're seeing some of the fibrotic Stricture uh, also. Kind of stricture. Yeah. So I now I go through the stricture to get to the. So can you pull back a little on this? Little back on this? So I don't want to damage. So I go back to the stone area. Okay. Yeah, that's the stone there. And then I. Oh, beautiful views there. Yeah. So he's just continues to flush. Yeah, so, and then I have to adjust it so that it hits against the stone. But so the safety of the laser is that even if you hit the fi wall, nothing happens. Nagi. Okay. And wow, that's a big stone. Yeah, that's a Nagi, big stone. The, yeah. the energy you use is the same as CBD stone? Or, uh, yeah, same as CBD stone. And you can see it's, it's very, very powerful. Huh? It's almost gone. Like Star Wars. Huh? Sipo? Nice. <laughs> You're good at games, yeah. I know. <laughs> Poof. Yeah, the Jedi. <laughs> wow. 
Now you see we have actually broken most of it through. So I'll just come back a little. Uh, this is the advantage as I said is because with this uh, you don't have to worry about injury to the pancreatic duct is not so bad. Okay. Yeah, now I think we have got most of it, so I'll put some water and see what happens. Yeah, you still see this. You have the f the leading part of the fiber. You will have some light there to tell us. Now I got it right right on the top there of the stone, and then I'm going to now blast it. And what happens is you get this smoky appearance. Intermittently, you have to keep flushing it with. Uh, yeah, now again. Very nice views, Suzma. Very nice. No, oh, they're beautiful. The stone looks actually more extensive than we thought. Yeah, on what the first we thought view. it was, yeah. So then I again wash it. We keep aspirating in between also so that you don't put too do much. You, but do you intubate all your spy cases? No, no, we if don't. Gonna intubate, if no. I mean, the ones no. where you're going to do copious yeah, take, yeah, I think when you take a long time, like case like this, we would like to intubate, yeah. And you can see it's taking some blasting to clear the stone. So hopefully he won't need another workshop. <laughs> and so since you're seeing good effect, you're not going to adjust your settings. You would only adjust them yeah, yeah. if you saw if nothing. If I, if I find that it's not very good, then I'll adjust them. But I think now the other important thing is that as you're blasting the stone, you might have to keep continuously putting in some fluid. So that the fluid medium acts as the shockwave transmitter in these cases. So we are actually boring through the stone now. And he's I like that you're going through the middle, so hopefully yeah, it'll break into two smaller pieces. And then yeah. And yeah, now actually we've done that. See that? The two pieces separate. Are they? Yeah. Who's my spectacle? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, now I see it. Okay. And now you can see yes. that too. So Very we created nice a tunnel inside. Can you see that? Yes, yes, yes we can yes. see. Yeah. <coughs> so I'll just hit the smaller pit also now. I was telling Nagi in our unit we we don't have a laser. We have EHL, but the danger with EHL is that you can damage the the duct wall. Yeah. So here I think we got most of the thing out. So what I'll do is I'll pass. Uh, Okay, let's look at it fluoroscopically to see what happened. You can see the, you can see that there is one more fragment right there on the top which we'll have to reach. So I'll pull back the laser fiber a little, Patrick. We'll pull it back a little. Pull it back till it goes into the into the scope. Then I'll go. I have to catch the big fragment. Ah, that's okay. Now I'll go to have to catch the big fragment there, which uh, is the one. Which will be the ideal one? And yeah. Are See you going to use the spy? Sorry, you have the spy basket, or uh, we have a spy basket. Do you have a spy basket? Spy basket. So Maybe the, we can the show spy that, basket yeah. and the spy snare just came out. Well, yeah. in the U.S. in the last few months. No, everywhere. I think the first time here also. But the only issue, the you got to make sure your piece is small enough. Yeah. Uh, See that one there now again. We got the basket, but we need some time. Okay. Yeah. Just when you push it gently. So you got the big one. That's a big stone that I have to target now and then they're getting your basket the basket I think is fifth it might be 15 millimeters I haven't used it yet myself but yeah I haven't used to so this is the first uh, demonstration yeah. Listen. no we didn't pull it too much back no maybe a little bit too much back <laughs> yeah Very nice. You can see the stone very nicely there. Yeah, the view is spectacular in with the spy scope. Yeah, after using the second generation scope, I am convinced that maybe we can do even pancreatic endotherapy with this. <laughs> You're doing it already. <laughs> but that's definitely too big to go in the spy basket, so, yeah, so we'll, we'll need have smaller to. pieces. Yeah. Yeah. So, I'll have to come back a little now, see, now. So maybe we'll change back to room four in the meanwhile. Yeah, so yeah. We'll, we'll come back to you So you can see the soon. nice stone and if you blast this one, I have a feeling that we can clear his duct to larger. Yes, yes. Yeah. So we have 
done a lot of uh, lithotripsy here. Very nice views with this new uh, spyglass scope. You can see the stone there and you can see my laser there, the, the fiber there. Can you see that? And now I am going yes. to blast the area. Yeah, this is what we are doing. We are doing a lithotripsy with the laser with uh, you can see that nicely now. Okay. Producing a cavity there. It is like tunneling through, you know, like uh, the Hong Kong tunnel. <laughs> yeah. So, now uh, I am just thinking now that we have done lot of this procedure now with lot of saline infusion. So, we do not want to cause uh, more problems for the patient. So, ideally I think what we should do now is to uh, exchange the laser fiber for a guide wire, the same guide wire what we used and put in a stent. Uh, and then the fragments come out and then you invite me again for the next workshop. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. So, I am now I again it is very important that I am not removing the, the spy scope. We had some fantastic views with this spy scope and I am going to use the spy scope again to put my guide wire inside because you see my spy scope is very near the strictured area. So, it goes in very easily the guide wire. So, we take off the laser fiber. Okay. Patrick you agree with me? Yes. Sir, okay. Sure. He agrees. So, that is good. So, then we put the uh, same I am using an angled 2 5 visiglide. Always for the spy scope use 2 5 not 3 5 because it moves much better. But I say the images are very good and hopefully by next year they have the third version of the <laughs> digital scope which makes it much more easier. So, we go across and then I think this patient has had excellent symptomatic relief. I am sure it will continue to be better for him. Yeah, we, we did not use the basket because I thought we yeah, yeah we can see that. Basket is needed. So, we just let it flush out. Uh, yeah, just let time. it flush out. Yeah. For baskets are mostly for bile duct stones. The difference with pancreatic stones are when you actually crush them they become small fragments which tend to come out and you can see that very nicely already in the fluoroscopy. For bile duct stones are getting out st uh, uh, displaced uh, structure, uh, baskets are, are very useful with the spy scope. The stones in the pancreatic duct actually are stuck, yeah, it is coming out, it is stuck to the side of the wall and it's some, it's some yeah. difficulty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you want to? Yeah. We want to go in with the loop, you know. I will give you some play by pulling back the spy scope. So, you get a more play, yeah. Now do that, yeah. Yeah, do. And then I will push the scope. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Yeah. See that now. Okay. So, I can even uh, take this out and put a spintrotome if you want at this stage. So, it becomes easier for you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you can show. I think the camera can focus on the basket. This is the spy basket that is there. It is 15 millimeters. Yeah. Um, but again, you want to make sure that you are yeah. only using okay. it for tiny little stone fragments because yeah. you can get entrapped in the ducts. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, but you decided not to? No. Large screen? Uh, I think this is more for displaced tents and sometimes small fragments, but not for pancreatic. Sometimes in the bile duct, if you have a huge yeah, exactly. bile duct and a lot yeah. of stone burden and you are trying to clear, yeah, be helpful for it that, could yeah. be helpful yeah. under direct visualization. There is also a small snare. Uh, again, again the, the problem is I think uh, probably the channel in the third version, they may increase the channel. If it increases passing this axis, it will become easier. Otherwise, it is not so easy sometimes to pass. Yeah, so, you see the wire there is sort of looped there, but anyway, we will. Uh, I will use this to guide myself now and see if I can pass the wire uh, through this duct. Yeah, it is in a good position now. So, you can pass a spintotome on this. So, then so what happens is uh, I can get the wire to go according to the direction that I want. So, we are now deeply in. So, I am going to use a spintotome on top of this to get deep inside, have a nice position of the wire, and then we are going to put a stent. So, we Wait, as we do this if you want to go and come back also there is no problem. Yes, yes. so we will go to room 4. Professor On ready? Yeah. So, nice. so, yeah you can see that uh, we have the guide wire deep inside uh, the small fragments there. 
Uh, we are passing a seven French nine centimeter stent, which is single pigtail. For pancreatic duct, I always use a single pigtail stent, never a straight stent, because I've had occasions where the stent migrates and then it's a very difficult time trying to get it out. So I'm going to pass this. The technique of pancreatic stenting is similar to biliary stenting, except that you'll have to have your scope more straight, and I'll show you that, and then you have to use more of the scope shaft because of the stricture that is there. So now I'm just getting the stent out. I'll get the scope very close to the papilla. That's very important. Otherwise, you loop. Yeah, I'm, I'm closer now to the papilla. See that? And because of the distortion, you don't make the anatomy very well here. But you see what I'm doing? I'm coming very, very close to the papilla. I'm using my up and down knob more often than I do with biliary so that part of the pushing of the stent is done by up and down knob. And as I'm doing this, I can also watch fluoroscopically and you can see the stent has passed across that so-called narrowing and I think we are through. We saw your mark. Yeah, I saw the mark, yeah. So now I just push the stent down again and then Patrick is going to release the stent. And yeah. we were yeah. discussing the, the stent length uh, and yeah. Nagi as I does the same as I do where if you're uh, going to be repeatedly stenting the PD, each time we choose yeah. a little bit different length so that the end of the stent is not con uh, landing in the same exact spot repeatedly, which could cause some stricturing as well. Yeah, I think that's a very important point. Change the length of the stent, and if you can increase the size, increase the size of the stent for pancreas. Okay, then that that's the procedure. Very I think nice uh, demonstration. Thank you very, much. Mm -hmm. very nice procedure.